Well, Callan Scott House, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, in your beloved Cardiff City, how are you feeling? I feel at home, Beth. I feel like I'm back at home. <laughs> no, it's great. I'm loving it and I'm so grateful to be here. I've missed I've missed it. I've missed coming here. I, I come here, you know, every, every home game. Me and my father are season ticket holders and uh, yeah, it's a shame really. It's a shame, you know, how it's, how it's all been, but it's great to be here today and especially with you as well. Oh, that's very <laughs> kind of you. Listen, it's been great to, you know, to, to have you here, come here today and speak to us because quite frankly, it's a sin. What an absolute joy to watch during lockdown, which has been, you know, a hard time for everyone. Mm. But talk to me about the whole experience oh thank you yeah well it's been it's been mad i think i think you know for, for all of us involved i think we knew you know we we've always said we knew we were going to be part of something important you know we read the scripts and i think all for all of us not only because of the subject matter because it's a russell t davis it was beautifully written it was exciting it was funny but i think for it to have had the reaction it's had and you know for, i still can't believe that the the application for HIV tests have gone through the roof. I actually don't think there's any better accolade to have from this show, no matter whatever happens from, from year on. There's no better thing to happen than that for us, because that's what the show is about. The show is about a deadly virus, and this virus hasn't gone. Yeah, it's better now, but it still exists. So I think for, for us, we're just so chuffed. We're so chuffed to be part of something that is making proper waves, you know, not, not kind of just like any waves, it's proper, really important things, I think. Yeah, and it's also an education, isn't it? Which we'll talk about a little bit more, but I want to hear about your story and how you got the part of Colin, because, you know, for anyone who's watched it, I mean, you, you're such a brilliant part in it, you did make me cry a lot, though. Oh, thank but... <laughs> you. Did I? In a bad way. In, in a very good <laughs> way. Because my acting was so bad. It was, it was so bad, honestly. I don't know why you're here. No, but on a serious note, you know, 21 years old, and what a journey it's been for you. Yeah, no, it has. Just... Well, well, so I, I, I've actually, I actually graduated in July. So I graduated in July, and I was about to start my... My, I was about to finish my second year of drama school when I got a call from my agent to say about the show and and uh, and, and basically my agent was my agent said that I wouldn't go up for anything whilst I was at drama school unless it was a sort of career starter or a life changer whatever and anyway this show came along and I was just like oh my gosh it's amazing so then I taped for it and then I went up to London and met for it I, I didn't meet Russell at the time but I met our producer director casting director and then I got the call the next day when I was in my school my sixth form block because I, I was randomly visiting the school because I was head boy I was a little you know I was a bloody you know I would always go back and visit so I went back and visited the, the, the next day randomly Randomly, and then I got a call from my agent there and then and it was just like it felt like romantic Beth that I was in my school you know but it was amazing and uh, yeah and then I guess the rest is history like you know it's very unusual to get you know a, a, a job straight out of drama school like like the one that you've got but to do it whilst you're still in there I mean can you but can you believe your luck not at all I still can't believe it I still can't believe that I'm I still can't believe that they wanted to cast me Beth genuinely now I I actually didn't ever think that I would act on television I didn't think that it was accessible to someone like me what do you mean from, by that yes well I, I think you know I think as a as a Welsh actor it's, it's it, I think it's we don't see a lot of ourselves on the telly particularly young actors, you know, we, we, ne we don't see that. It's not something that is sort of accessible to us. There's, a, there's, a there's been amazing dramas, like In My Skin, which recently was on the BBC, and, and that, was a, that was amazing. And there, there is things that have come out, but, you know, compared to, like, dramas with young people in England, they see, they see young English actors all the time, whereas in Wales, we're not blessed with that. So I guess... For me, I, I didn't expect it. Well, never. I never expected it. So I'm, I guess I'm still sort of pinching myself in a way, you know? So obviously we hear actors, actors talking about, you know, reading the script. But what was it like when you turned up on that first day of filming with all the, all the other oh, of your cast? I was so cast? nervous. I was so nervous. Almost as nervous as I am now, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I, I was really nervous. I think because, you know, not only was it my first job, but actually we all felt a lot of pressure on that first day because we knew we were creating something important and also it's really important to Russell. You know, this show is sort of, I think Russell sees this show as a sort of, 
uh, he, you know, this has been he's been waiting a long time to make this show. So I think for all of us that first day, you you could sort of cut the atmosphere with a knife. To be honest, we were also nervous, but you know, it, it wasn't before long where somebody tripped over a mic stand, and then we were all just sort of laughing, you know, because it was a laugh just as much as it was a sort of a, a hard story to tell. We had such a laugh, Beth. Almost as much of a laugh as we are having. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very kind of you. But what I loved about it as well, you know, anything to recreate the 80s as well. That that looked like fun. Oh, so fun. You weren't alive in the 80s, or no? I, I blink in was. You were? 83, I'm an You 80- must have been young. I was young. <laughs> you know, I, I like to think I was a punk rocker, but I really wasn't. I was seven or something, yeah. but yeah. But, oh, it's so fun. Because, you know, it's, it's a decade that I didn't know too well, really. To, you know, because obviously I was born in... The, in 99 so you know long gone the 80s were but going back and visiting you know like the music the soundtrack of the show is is almost a character in itself but then also like the fashion and watching things like the Larry Grayson show you know with the, these shows that are so brilliant and hilarious because you I think I do actually think we had you had personalities in the 80s that are not around anymore you know like like Larry Grayson like he was like he was like Alan Carr and Graham Norton in, in one, do you know what I mean? Because he's so brilliant. But yeah, just going back and throwing myself in the period was amazing. What was it like, you know, being with on a set with Keely Hawes and Stephen Fry? Was that was that weird? Mad. You know what? I actually so so I actually never met Keely or Stephen because oh. I never had scenes with them. But you know, what I heard about them and, and they messaged me like even the fact that they know who I am like it sounds ridiculous but like you know they messaged me you know after the when the show came out because they were like I know we haven't met but congrats and I said the same I you, you know but but you know being on set with like Neil Patrick Harris is like something that I'm gonna treasure for the rest of my life like the fact that he's now a friend is amazing because he, he's, he's a legend he's an absolute global icon no matter you know what way what we think about it like he's just an icon so I, I just I don't know Beth I, I, I like I said I'm still pinching myself he's a he's a legend you know proper legend <laughs> yeah and, and I guess you know a part of what was so great about your character was, you know, the Welsh element, especially us watching it from Wales, and the Welsh man, wasn't it? Which yeah, was so yeah. emotional. Yeah. But you, how pleased are you that almost that you kind of could represent your country as well? Oh, don't make me emotional now, Beth. No, it, 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 it's amazing. I'm so proud to be Welsh, I, and so is Andrea as well. I'm so proud about the language and where we come from. I feel like we've got to be because we're a small country, right? And when shows like this come out, which have a Welsh family, you know, you know, not not just a Welsh character, but a Welsh family and Welsh Welsh characters, I think it's just we've got to shout about it, shout as much as we can about it, and, and that's why I'm so grateful. I guess even for you interviewing me, like we can talk about it and we can tell people and inform people about um, not only like Welsh stories but queer Welsh stories. I think that's really so cool we're going to talk a bit more about colin because i i love colin and um i i had to watch it in stages because i knew how emotional it would be and i all my friends group were like what happens to colin oh no not colin you know how was that playing a character where you know it, you kind of grew with him but then ultimately he had that horrendous death yeah it's it, it's mad isn't it because 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 colin i think when i was reading the script episode one you go, oh, this this boy, you know, he's gonna he's gonna go the whole hog, yeah. yes to yes to you know, and you want to see him grow. So I actually thought that as well, reading it. As soon as the show progressed, then and and it went, you know, to eps two and three, and as I was reading, I was so shocked, but it made me so excited to play the role because I was actually then after we finished filming, waiting and sitting on the show, knowing all the secrets about what was going to happen. Like, I was so excited to see how people would react. So, you know, hearing even you talk about it now, I'm just like, oh, it's so cool. Because, you know, it's, it's great playing these characters that have secrets and they're hiding things and, you know, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen. Because then when, when, the, when the sort of shock happens then, it's just so fun and it's hilarious to see it away because that's, you know, that, that's how, I think that's what Russell wanted. He wanted the shock there and it's, it's so fun, it's so fun. But hard as well, like there was tricky, tricky things like the dementia plot line and the seizures. You know, they, they're difficult, they're really difficult, but, um, but really fun as well, you know, because, because we had to in a way. Like we couldn't, it couldn't be all doom and gloom because like we've talked about there's joy there's so much joy in the script as well as tragedy how did your family feel you know seeing seeing you act oh gosh i think my mother bless her she actually walked out at one point in ep3 because (laughs) 
it? Did he, I mean, it must be difficult, you know, watching your son um, sort of die. <laughs> And I think bless her, she found it quite tra traumatic. Um, uh, but 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 you know, she, I think she's okay now. I hope she is anyway. <laughs> she looks it now. <laughs> and you know, it, and it, some of the bits of it's to say we're a bit raunchy. I don't think were I. Were they? Would, I, I didn't see those scenes. <laughs> I wouldn't have wanted, wanted to watch it with my parents. So I wasn't in it. So how was that for you? Watching it back. Yeah, with oh, you know all the sex scenes. Now you're that, asking, like, Beth. <laughs> it was it was funny, you know, because because actually like. Filming those scenes, we have we have amazing intimacy coordinators on set who, who kind of normalise it. It's not really like weird to film. Those days are long gone. You know, you have in, these intimacy coordinators now on set, which kind of make it incredible. It, it, it actually you actually feel liberated doing it, which wow. is really important. So watching it, uh, I, I think watching the back, I was just really proud. I felt really proud of it because it's fun, it's great, you know. And it's you, you don't look at it and you you don't you know you, none of us are traumatized by those those scenes. We're all just like really excited because actually it's it's a story about sex. It's about you know a, a sexually transmitted disease, and I think you know it's. So I think those scenes actually, I feel really proud of it. The very little scene that I had, but you know, I think not just my scenes. I think all of those scenes, that everyone just did an amazing job, and I, well, I just, I really do. I, I feel so proud to be part of this work, Beth. I really do. And I think this, it shows, doesn't it, when actually it's not about the sex scenes. People aren't talking about either positive or negatively, and that's what I th actually was really pleased to not read and hear because it was about the story mm. and obviously sex was part of it but it wasn't you know because I think let's be quite honest about it when it comes to whether it's lesbian or gay sex there can be quite an uppity, uppity nose about it can't mm. there but actually I didn't see or hear any of that and, I, and no. that shows doesn't it the yeah. strength there hasn't been any I haven't seen anything like that which I think I hope because there I was hope. a Bridgerton for goodness sake I know. <laughs> well there you go <laughs> They clearly were doing something wrong. They weren't. I'm, I'm watching Bridgerton right now. It's amazing. Um, and I've also got friends in it, so I shouldn't. <laughs> no, I'm saying, it, I'm, I'm saying it, you know, it's a great no, in either way, isn't it? It's great. It is great. But but I think, yeah, it's, 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 it's well, it's, it's brilliant, isn't it? And I think, you know, you should, you know, everyone has sex. You know what I mean? Like, so I think, you know, it's that thing of like, it's nothing we haven't seen before. So I guess... I'm glad that it hasn't been a massively sort of debated thing and actually we can actually talk about the things which really matter in the show, which are the status of the characters and how how they go and get tested. I think that's so, you know, the, the, those scenes where the characters go get tested, I think, are vital because actually there's a lot of people who ha probably haven't been tested, a lot of teenagers, a lot of uh, sort of adolescents who, who haven't been tested still, who, who have had sex and actually we should all get tested no matter if we're in monogamous relationships or we're having sex with every Tom, Dick and Harry like we should because knowing your, our status is key to, to this this sort of goal now which they have about ending transmissions by um, 2030. You were born in 1999 I think section 28 ended in 2003 how mm. frustrated are you that you know throughout well definitely my education and probably yours that we didn't learn more about the lgbtq community and everything mm. around it it's just awful isn't it like wh wh why why are we why have we not been taught about this horrific thing that, that was was there like the, I, like the fact that i didn't know about it until i sort of basically started this job i heard murmurs of this law that existed but i never knew that it was called section 28 i never knew that thatcher brought it in i actually didn't know about her inalienable right speech it's all these important things in our in this in it's it's not just LGBTQ plus history. It's it's UK history. It's massively important things that we need to talk about. And I'm, I think I'm just shocked. I'm still shocked that it's not there now. So I think yeah. I, but I'm glad I guess that this show is there to educate people because actually we have to rely on the arts to educate because it's there not just for entertainment. It's there to educate as well. And I think if if education can't step up and deliver, then the arts is probably the, the sector which, which should. Before you did this show, you know, were you passionate in campaigning? Because you seem very, you know, driven <laughs> now. Is it, is it kind of enlightened oh, you to I think, what's to be done? I think I just enjoy being part of important pieces of work. I think if I, obviously I'm just starting off my career, if I can be part of important pieces of work going forward, then I guess I'm, I'm really grateful for that because actually it's really cool to be part of things which are giving people voices and educating people and 
you know, I'm an actor. I, I don't see myself as an activist or a campaigner yet, anyway. But, but you know, I just, I just enjoy... I guess I'm, I, I, I'm privileged to be part of something which is so important and also to be part of something that's been written by such a legendary writer like Russell who we're in, we're in capable hands, you know, so I just think, yeah, who knows, who knows, Beth, <laughs> in 10 years time like, we could, you could be interviewing me and I'll be the first minister. Oh yes, please. <laughs> oh, God. I, I'm not going to talk you about that. Welsh independence because I know, I know you're, you're a fan of that. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I, I, I am in a way. I never was just because I think I didn't, I didn't know about it. But I think now, gosh, I think the further we are away from Westminster, the better. I, that's what I think. I think it's, I think it's things which, for me, like I, 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 I'm sort of, I'm sort of sore for it now because, because you know, at the end of the day, look at the way we've been treated over this, this, this pandemic. It's been awful. You know, that government, and I like to say that government because they are. They, it feels like that government. It doesn't feel like my government or our government. They, 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 we've been neglected. So I just think, why, why shouldn't we be talking about Welsh independence? Like, because essentially that's what we're hurtling towards, whether we like it or not, whether it's now or in 15 years' time. It's going to happen. Something will happen, whether it's a referendum or whether we actually go on to vote yes. But, you know, I, I, do, I do see what's going on in Scotland and what's happened in Scotland. I feel murmurs and I feel something building right now. And I f it definitely feels part of something that is um, a really important discussion. Because you've got a lot of followers now, it give, that gives you a voice and people listen. So does that, do you sometimes forget when you tweet stuff or whatever? Do you, yeah, do you... <laughs> I do, I do. Because actually I still feel like I'm a sixth former in school and it doesn't matter what I tweet. Because <laughs> I remember like, I remember I couldn't vote in Brexit. And I remember tweeting a lot during Brexit, being like, vote, vote, remain, vote, remain. And actually, like, yeah, I, I guess it does. I guess, you know, I guess, yeah, scarily, I do, I do have a voice. But, like, I, I, I know, I don't think I have, like, controversial opinions or views. I just feel like I'm trying to always look for the best in, in this country that we live in, in this small country that we live in. And, but actually, like, we've got amazing people who live here, and I think we need to look out for each other. That's what I think. Be kind, be nice, be be a good person. Well, obviously, all this like kind of fame has happened in lockdown. So you haven't have you had any of the moments in the supermarket, or does no one recognise you with the mask on? Um, only once. <laughs> I was I was off. I was actually like I was actually in that Asda in Leckwith, and uh, this 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 uh, this one of the pe people behind the counter was like because I, I was getting a samosa. <laughs> what did they get? And opposite the counter, he went, "I know your face." <laughs> How did that feel? Well, it was, I guess it reminded me that the show isn't just going on inside my living room. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it was fun. It was, it's, it's, it's funny, isn't it? I, I mean, if we don't laugh, I'll cry, Beth. You know what I mean? So I guess it's, it's just funny. I think it's really funny. Well, listen, you know, because you, you've obviously played Colin, it means you get to do celebrity pundits thing like you are today with Cardiff City versus Derby. How does that feel? Oh, it's so cool. I, I mean, I, I, like this is the thing. I, I, but even before I was acting, I was, I was playing football. Like, like actually, way before I started acting. Um, thanks, to, thanks to my, my, my parents and my brother. So I think you know, football for me has been a big love all my life, and particularly Cardiff City. I went, I was at Ninian Park. That was my first ever football match I saw versus Nottingham Forest. Um, in two thousand and nine, and I think. You know, it, it's great. I oh, bet I'm just so I'm just so grateful. I feel it's, it's so cool, isn't it? You know what I mean? I would I would never be here otherwise. I'd be in my bedroom trying to stream it illegally on a telly. Obviously, football and male sport in particular, there's quite a, a label of toxic masculinity towards it, and I know that you want to challenge that as well. Mm. I, I I actually you know I think there's so much toxic masculinity embedded in sport. Um, you know, particularly male sport, um, and it's and I think it's something that we need to rid of because, you know, hooliganism, all these really sort of awful traits that sport has, like it, it sort of it, it fuels really toxic attitudes, and that comes out in the form of homophobia, <clears throat> racism, you know, things that are that are really negative things that don't need to be there. We forget that sport is there to entertain. It's a positive thing. It's not, you know, it's not like political. We, you know, we're not going on and we're not running around the field debating. We're running around the we're running around the pitch, trying to score a goal. It's sport. It's there to to sort of excite people. 
So why do we have to have these toxic attitudes involved? And I just think the more campaigns that are there and that exist and remind people that football is a form of entertainment, it's not there to, to, you know, to fuel these toxic attitudes. Actually, we're actually moving towards something then which is actually really brilliant. And I just think, I hope that we're part of a really cool, you know, like with Black Lives Matter now and with the Rainbow Laces campaign, these really cool things that exist to really stamp it out and really kick it out. And I think if that happens, then, oh my gosh, how amazing would that be? It's, it's just brilliant. And hopefully then we'll see the results, whether it's on the pitch, off the pitch, in figures that may then appear. You know, I just think it's brilliant. I think it's really cool. Because obviously you, you, you kind of in, in the acting industry and then obviously you, you love football, but you know, you think of those two when you kind of think, well, they conflict each other in terms of, you know, stereotyping. Did you ever feel football maybe wasn't for you? Uh, well, not, not really, because I actually, like, when I was really young, I, um, I didn't really care. <laughs> the reason I stopped playing football, actually, is because, like, I sort of was dancing on the pitch. <laughs> So I guess, I guess, the, I think for, I, I, I actually, football, I, I realised that football wasn't for me because I just loved acting so much, I guess. But, you know, there's probably a lot of people that do feel that way. And I'm not going to deny that. And I think for those people, that's why it, these attitudes and these toxic attitudes need to be stamped out. For the, for the youngsters, for young people, so they can go, so they actually don't need to feel like... It's not accessible to them, like it, the football isn't for them, that actually it can be for them, it can be for anyone, it can be for, if you love it and you're good at it, go for it. And isn't that brilliant? That's brilliant. That's what, that's what every young person should be able to do and be able to strive for, because actually without dreams and hopes and ambitions, we don't go on to do anything, you know? Well, a dream for you today, you're going to be naming the teams as they walk out. Oh, it's so cool. I'm so chuffed. I can't wait. I, I just, well, I, I can't get it wrong, Beth, that's the problem. <laughs> you've, you've built me up now, so i got I got to get it right. <laughs> um, listen, it's been amazing chatting to you. I think for, for someone, and I, this, I hope it doesn't sound patronising, but someone so young, you really are a refreshing voice, not just for, for Wales, but in terms of, you know, and masculinity and men and what we're meant to be about. So thank you so much. Thank you, But Beth. what is next for you? Oh, who knows? Who knows? I, well, I, I just want to keep telling stories and keep acting and, and going on and, and doing really exciting things. But, you know, people have got to have me first, Beth. People have got to employ me. So who knows? I might never work again. Hey, listen, you could be a football commentator. <laughs> I will. And that's, what, that's what I'm going to do today now. I'm going to try and get a job. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an amazing to see you on It's a Sin. It's been amazing to chat to you today. Good luck with everything in the future. Thank you, Beth. Thank you so much.